London, 1858. Death and disease stalked the Thames. Raw sewage was dumped straight into the river, which became a brown sludge. And the smell was terrible. No one had doubted the connection between cholera and sewage, but only Dr. John Snow had understood exactly how they were connected. Like many others, I've always believed in the miasma theory. That disease was carried by smell. Now I realize I was wrong. That Dr. Snow was correct. Cholera is waterborne. And yet, since the sewers were built, the cholera has died out, and everywhere public health has improved. I thought the sewers were helping because they removed the stench, the pestilence, and therefore the disease. That was our priority. Purification of the water was always secondary. Yet that is what has made a difference to my fellow citizens. This, then, is the supreme irony of Basil Jett's story. He had built his sewers when almost everyone believed the miasma theory. His aim simply to take away the smell. But by also removing the sewage, he had accidentally ensured that future generations of Londoners would be safe from the deadly disease. He had saved the city. If the malignant spirits, whom we moderns call cholera, typhus and smallpox, were to set out in quest of the man who has been their deadliest foe in all London, they would make their way to the home of Joseph Bazalgette. The accuracy of John Snow's observations 
is fully vindicated. Cholera is a water-borne disease. But tragically, he never lived to see his theory accepted. By the time he was proved right, Jon Snow had been dead for eight years. The effectiveness of Basil Jett's great work was proven for all on July 26, 1867. That night, the equivalent of two months' average rainfall fell upon London. Basil Jett's sewers coped with every last drop. The final section of the sewer system was the Thames Embankment, a mammoth engineering project in its own right. It housed both the northern low-level sewer and the Metropolitan Underground Railway. And in time, the embankments would help to create a faster-flowing, cleaner river. And if it's all working as it should, no one would even think. No one When he'd finished with the sewers, Basil Jett turned his attention to London itself. His bridges span the river at Putney, Battersea and Hammersmith. He replaced narrow streets with broad boulevards. He laid out parks right across the metropolis. As much as any man, Joseph Bazalgette made modern London. As for cholera, it never returned after Bazalgette's sewers were completed. We can only guess at how many lives he saved. Similar clean-up operations have taken place in other major cities around the world. Yet, 150 years since the Great Stink, in the developing world, billions of people are living and dying in the kind of squalor that was eradicated long ago in the rich world. 2.6 billion people lack access to basic sanitation, and over 1 billion lack access to clean water. There is a global crisis in sanitation and water, and it undermines all development efforts. The stink goes on.